board and we'll get going. So before we start, as always, um, I'm going to take a minute to review the risk disclaimer. Uh, as you know, trading any financial instrument carries an inherent risk and you can lose more capital than you have on deposit. And more importantly, with respect to today, um, any of the views expressed by me today are solely mine and they are not indicative of views held or expressed by Tickman. Okay, so before we get going, just a, uh, a brief introduction for those who are here for the first time with respect to who I am. Um, my name is Patrick Munley. I've been involved in the financial markets for 15 years now. Um, wasn't always uh, involved in financial markets. After I graduated, I, uh, I joined a consulting firm in London, uh, eventually left that firm and did a startup with a couple of colleagues there. And over a four to five year period experienced some pretty rapid growth and I cashed in my stake in the business and uh, decided to explore my passion for markets. And so um, late 2004, 2005, set up my, uh, my first online trading account, had, uh, had some chips to play with and time on my hands. So I started day trading the e-mini S&P. Market was trending uh, north and, um, and I experienced, like many do, some, um, some beginner's luck and uh, started to make some solid and then quite significant gains and um, couldn't understand why I hadn't been doing it all my life. Um, that beginner's luck, as is often the case, ran out. And over a very short period of time, I gave back all the gains and then took a, a personal uh, six-figure hit on my capital. And, uh, and then had a, a moment of clarity and decided to step back and really assess whether or not I could realistically uh, make a sustainable income from the markets. And so um, using some of my prior skills in executive search, I. Um, hunted down a, uh, a mentor and, um, and worked with this guy for 18 months to two years, uh, not just upping my technical game, but, um, but more importantly, my mental game. He really, uh, it was a period during which I became far more self-aware and understood the holistic nature of, um, of trading. And so uh, developed a, a a business plan, a trading plan, extensively back tested and forward tested uh, that plan. And then I came back to the markets with, uh, with my cash in 2008. Um, obviously a very tricky year, it was, uh, it was a tricky start. Um, but because of the amount of back testing I'd done and the forward testing, I had absolute conviction in my trade plan. And I knew that if I just kept taking the trades, managing my risk, then over an extended series of outcomes, uh, that my edge would, would do, would demonstrate itself and it did. And so since 2008 on a, an annual basis, I've been consistently profitable. Um, but that, you know, that doesn't mean to say that, um, that I don't go through periods of drawdown. On the screen, you can see uh, trading, my trading results uh, since 2013. The reason it's from 2013 is that from the period from 2008 to 2013, I'd had uh, some, some, some really good years. And so friends and family started see what I was doing and they wanted to get a piece of the action and as such I set up a managed account service at the, in January 2013 and the results are for that managed account service that you can uh, currently see on the screen. So again, um, you know, I go through periods of drawdown and, um, and this is just something I, I totally accept. I'm not emotionally invested in the outcome of, uh, of individual trades or even a string of trades um, where my concern is or my focus is, is over the next hundred trades, because I know that if I keep, um, if, I, if I apply my trade plan with excellence, then the market will eventually come back to me. You know, there is no, there's no single, there's no single approach that will be successful in all market conditions. Um, and you just, and that's, that's, I, I completely accept that. And I'm focused on my process, not the outcomes, because I know if I keep hitting the trades as per the plan, then, uh, the outcomes will take care of themselves. The most important figure for me really in terms of this data is down here in terms of an average winning month at 7.96%, an average losing month at 2.32%. You can extrapolate out there that on average I'm making two to three times what I lose. So it's really about um, keeping the risk tight and letting, and letting the, when you catch these, these winning moves and, and, and runs in the market is letting them run and, and making those X multiples 
of, uh, of gains. So that gives you a flavor of where I'm coming from. Uh, alongside my, my trading and uh, account management service, I have a couple of other projects. Obviously, I'm a, a market expert in residence at Tickmill. I provide a daily market outlook, um, giving my take on the market and the technical setups. And then I also provide a, a trade of the day, um, which gives additional uh, opportunities and uh, we've increased that now do it with, uh, with something called a tick mill chart hit where I do a, a short video each morning outlining a setup that I'm watching for the day ahead um, and then my final passion project really is um, is FX career swap this is uh, a firm that I joined over a year ago now um, with the idea of um, supporting and developing retail trading talent um, through a process of, of education and, uh, and development, uh, using some bespoke education and teaching uh, a bunch of the strategies that I've used over these past, um, past 12 years to be consistently profitable. And then we underpin all of that with, uh, with, a, with a funded account. So uh, you got, once you've completed the process, you can, uh, you can then use the funded account to, to ultimately grow a business. And, you know, we call it FX career swap. It's not FX lottery ticket. This isn't something that's going to happen over the next three, six, nine months, 12 months even. You know, it's a process where you build your business. And, you know, I, I consistently said you need to be thinking in terms of years, not in terms of months for doing that. But the opportunity is there to grow a significant business um, through our, our program. We offer a, uh, a two-week trial for anyone who's interested. Um, I'll put a link in the in the chat at the end uh, for you to, uh, to take a look at that. So that's uh, that's basically covers me. Now let's uh, let's jump into where we're up to with respect to the markets. So um, I covered this last week. I just want to revisit it again. Um, the this is the seasonal uh, trends for markets uh, as per the twenty-year averages. And we note, or I highlighted last week, that um, this is, August has historically been a tricky month for risk assets. You can see that um, most of the equity markets tend to struggle during August. And this correlates to risk FX with the, uh, the New Zealand dollar and the Australian dollar obviously having fairly um, weak months. The Japanese yen having a stronger month, obviously being uh, a safe haven asset. And so, um, so I'm cognizant as we go, as we, we're into August now, um, looking at the potential for opportunities for, to see weakness in risk assets. And obviously, I'm not, I'm not trading these seasonal patterns uh, as a standalone approach. What I'm looking at is, um, is using them as a, an additional confirmation as and when I get signals um, in these pairs. So, uh, so there's, that's the seasonal pattern that, um, that I keep a track of. First chart I want to show you today. These are some charts that uh, that City City Quantifex have put out. Um, this is gold. Obviously, gold is is catching all the headlines at the moment, and it's been on the tear. Um, these guys think that there's a there's a target up here at 2,400, 2,393 actually, which is the trend line going back from the 1980s. It would be a third touch, and for those who I work with, they uh, they're aware that I pay a lot of attention to these third touch trend lines. They tend to uh, tend to be respected, and so. Obviously, we're, the current move is, is, in, is, in, is, is parabolic, really, at this stage. Um, but certainly want to watch when we get up into this 2,393 area as to, uh, as to see if that third touch trend line will be respected. Another caveat at the moment with gold is that um, it's currently trading 24% above its 200-day moving average. The last time it squeezed this much was, uh, was in 2011 in this period here. And, um, and obviously we saw a significant pullback. I'm not saying that that's necessarily what we're going to see now, but certainly in and around current levels, um, I'll cover the gold chart when we move into the actual charts. Um, I've been looking at 2146 as, uh, as an interim upside objective that where, whereby we could see a pullback. Um, and I'll cover that in more detail in, uh, in a little while when we open the gold chart. One of the um, sentiments or flow a uh, piece of information to consider is that um, the gold ETFs has seen its second biggest inflow on record. So this means retail money is flooding into gold at the moment. And historically, when, when we see these big inflows, 
that tends to be a period where, uh, where the market will correct. Uh, next chart here is dollar index. Again, um, looking at some symmetry patterns in terms, of, uh, in terms of the dollar index chart. For those who, who follow me or, or on my trading team, they know that I'm, uh, I'm bearish the dollar, but I see the potential at the moment, at least for a, correct, a corrective play before looking at, uh, at the next leg of downside. But if we look at these prior price patterns here that City have highlighted, that double top, um, we could get a target move now uh, down to 82, 98 or 83 in gold if we replicate this prior, uh, prior price pattern. And the setup is pretty, uh, pretty similar at the moment with the, uh, the close below the 55 month MA uh, breaking the rising trend line and, uh, and heading down for, for new lows. So I mean, uh, I remain uh, bearish the dollar, but in the interim, I see the potential for at least a correction before we get this next major leg of downside. And then that obviously feeds into the Euro. For those who've been following my chart of the day, et cetera, um, I'm looking for the Euro to <coughs> correct from, from current, <coughs> excuse me, Sorry about that. Uh, I'm looking for the euro to correct from current prices, similar to what City are, are, are looking at here. Um, I've got a similar pattern. We'll talk about that in a minute when I open the charts. The other one pair here is the dollar yen. Again, I've been uh, I've been flagging that. I'm looking for an entry into into the dollar yen on the long side now, um, as we're testing this key 104.50 area. It's been pretty pivotal over the years. Um, and the last bit of flow, a uh, couple of bits of flow data here. Um, this is from uh, Credit Agricole's uh, research team. Um, the, uh, the euro here, as per their positioning data, is reaching extremes in terms of overvalued. So that stretch in terms of positioning and sentiment um, should see uh, at least a corrective pullback in terms of a, a reversion to the, the mean type trade. And finally, from JP Morgan here, uh, they note that uh, Net USD positioning is, is at two standard deviations away from the mean. And so when they backtest that, um, for looking at forward USD performance, uh, similar starting points, USD has a tendency to move higher. So this would support that idea of a, a corrected phase. And you can see they quote the last times when this occurred and then the returns over, um, over the following one month. I'd be looking at the one month here in terms of what I see the potential for the correction, obviously, Sam. So looking for a correction in the dollar, uh, dollar index in August. But then certainly again, I'll be looking as we head into September, October and the elections, which I've talked about extensively, I see the potential for, uh, for another significant leg down in the dollar and leg higher, obviously in the Euro. So that's, uh, that's just some of the off the chart work uh, that I pay attention to. And uh, let's move onto the charts now. And uh, this is the dollar index. This is the broad dollar index versus the, uh, six majors. So what I'm looking at here, I talked about last week, we've got this test of the trend line. If I just uh, change this chart, uh, there we go. So last week I talked about uh, the test of the trend line. We've got that big uh, key reversal pattern. Um, and I actually, uh, I went long here and um, I had a couple of, couple of trades move into risk free. Um, then I went back in and I got, uh, I got a couple of dings on that. Um, but I'm certainly looking at this level, uh, paying attention to this trend line. If we get a, a key reversal today, if we take out yesterday's highs on a closing basis, get up somewhere near that weekly pivot, then I'll once again uh, jump in on the long side here in the dollar. I see the potential, certainly for what I refer to as a symmetry swing. So looking at uh, this leg here being replicated from here. So that will put us up into the monthly pivot there at 94.50. Uh, I don't expect it to be a straight line type move, but certainly we could grind up into there from current levels and then uh, and see where that takes us potentially into the end of August. And, uh, and then I'll be looking for reversal patterns. We could extend, obviously, the, uh, the 161 extension. So if we, uh, if we get some traction here, we don't find sellers at this area, then I'll be looking up into here um, as the next area of interest in terms of shorting opportunities. We've got these two uh, support areas to potentially act as resistance now. So these are the two key levels. If we can get a key reversal here in the dollar index, um, heading into, obviously we've got payrolls coming up tomorrow. Um, and again, statistically, Friday and Mondays uh, tend to be the 
the optimum time to look for these meaningful lows or highs in terms of uh, in terms of opportunities. So, uh, see if we can get this close tonight. We need to see a close above 93.25, and that would uh, that would get me in on the long side in terms of the dollar. Initially looking at 94.55. If nobody's home there, then uh, then I see us up testing that 95.80. Just flip these charts back. Uh, let's go to the equal weighted dollar index. So this is the, uh, the Dow Jones dollar index, which is equally weighted against uh, the Euro, the Yen, Sterling and the Aussie. Aussie obviously isn't in the, uh, in the, in the broader dollar index. Uh, it wasn't included at that time. And, um, and we can see the same idea is, uh, is at play here. We haven't quite tested down into, well, we're holding the median point of the, of the channel here. So this would be, an ideal area if we can get a bullish reversal again back through that 120 38 uh, weekly pivot would be ideal and then we'd have a, a potential double bottom scenario here setting up initially uh, the move for the monthly pivot 121.14 and then that sending trend line resistance you can also look again if we bring in the symmetry swing as a guide where we might run into trouble so the symmetry swing at this stage would um, would put us back into uh, the descending trend line here, and then we'd see if sellers are uh, are interested at this area. Again, looking for bearish reversal patterns where I'd set short positions. Uh, again, if, if nobody's home here and we don't get a signal, then you know we can certainly see this move up into this one six one eight area um, versus this prior swing. So let's take a look at the euro. So the euro is at the top of this channel, obviously. A similar a similar price structure to the dollar index as it uh, as it, it's the biggest component constituent of the dollar index so for me today what i've been looking for now is we need to get a close back through this 118 area uh, to do something on the on the short side this uh this is the near-term volume weighted average price and for me to get in uh, on these daily positions i need a, a close uh, that breaches that uh, that vwap and then what I'd be looking for is obviously um, symmetry swings again on my first port of call in terms of target areas. So this will put us down into the 116.50 area, got the monthly pivot just below, we've got the central tendency of the volatility uh, bands coming in there as well. So something in and around this 116 will be of interest. But once again, if, you know, if, this, if the move gathers a bit of momentum and we, um, and we don't find buyers in this area, and the next area of interest is going to be a deeper um, pullback. So we bring this versus this leg here. And then that puts us back into these prior highs at 115, which would be uh, what I consider really to be a gift of a, an opportunity. So if we, we get it down back into this area, looking for bullish reversal patterns here, set long positions, and then the initial objective there versus, again, using the symmetry structure would be that we... Um, we get a move from there, from that 115, that would put us up into 120. Um, and again, ideally, if we're going to see this depth of corrective move, we want, we want to see this coming in and around uh, the end of, end of the month here. And then we see some uh, reversal as we head into September when we get the liquidity back into the market. So watching for the close today, if we're going to close below, uh, below this VWAP at 118, then I'd be looking once again on the short side of the dollar, initially targeting 116, nobody home, and then I'm looking at 115 before, again, looking to reverse that position and, um, and do something on the long side. Uh, one trade I've got running at the moment is the Euro CAD. We uh, tested up into a double top here. We had divergence and, um, and got a signal candle, and it's, uh, it's dragging its heels at the moment, but uh, as long as these... These candles stay red versus um, versus the. Let's see. So you can see here that although um, using normal charting, normal candles, this this candle closed green um, versus the VWAP, it's uh, it's red. So for me, in terms of my strategy, uh, this the, the, the trade stays on. I've uh, I'm trailing the stop a little bit now, but um, ultimately I'm looking for a move back down into initially. This 150 foot, these prior highs, 155.30. And if we can extend, then I'd be looking at the volatility support down to a 154. Um, 
So that's the Euro CAD that I've got on at the moment. Let's take a look at Sterling. So Sterling's back up into this major trend line resistance. Again, watching this one here, if we get a, uh, a reversal, take out uh, the VWAP 130.88, and ideally for it to be a key reversal, we need to take out yesterday's range. So you look at close below 130.50, then once again, there's an opportunity there for Sterling to experience a bit of weakness as we head into the, the back end of August um, before setting up for the next run higher. So that's, uh, that's another one that's on my radar. Got the Aussie. So the Aussie um, had a, a signal with the divergence here on the daily time frame as always, um, sending trend line, descending, negative divergence. Got the signal and um, Got one position that went went to risk free, and then I, I went back in and I got uh, I got taken out for a thirty pip loss on a re-entry. But I'm still watching this because, uh, again, if you, if we think in terms of process over outcome, so you know I'm not uh, I'm not thinking uh, you know the the short short term strings of of losing trades mean nothing to me. What I'm interested in is do when when I get a setup. Do I take the trade? And if it meets my criteria, I take the trade. And so what I'm watching for now today is if we get a close back below the VWAP, then I'll go back in here. Um, obviously, we're trading counter trends. So this is the month, this, this green line here, the thick one is the monthly VWAP. So the best trades are obviously where you're trading with the trends. The only time I'll trade counter trends is if I get a signal that is accompanied by divergence. Okay. So it's important, again, this is, this is the, the key to having a trading plan and you know, back testing it and forward testing it, that it gives you the conviction to keep taking the trade. So whilst I've got divergence on the momentum study, I can continue to look at counter trend trades as long as they meet the, my core swing strategies set up. And for me, that means we need to get a close now back below the VWAP. We've got the weekly pivot there, one, uh, 71.50, get a close back through there. And I think we can get down into to the 69 area in terms of the Aussie. Um, what else am I looking at? Aussie Kiwi is, uh, is looking interesting here. We've got a potential triple top developing. Um, we've got the RSI stochastic overblown and start and potentially going to roll over here. So what I'd be looking for again with this Aussie Kiwi, you can see the last time we got this tweezer top here. So I want to see a bearish close below 107.90. As an opportunity then to do something on the short side, certainly looking at the monthly pivot 107.10 can get through there. Then I'm looking down into range support at 105.85. Range support comes in with the volatility, uh, the VWAP bands here. So um, that again, it's counter trend, but we've got divergence on the. You can see we're making lower highs here in terms of the momentum study. And we're at, uh, we're at this triple top. Let's just draw this in. So you can see we're, we're struggling to get a close um, above this 108.28. So again, if we can get a bearish uh, tweezer top pattern here, then I see the potential to replicate this last leg of decline over here. So back into range support. And again, because of these summer months, I'm not, I don't, I'm not, anticipating big moves but certainly if we can define ranges then what we tend to see during the uh, the summer period is that we, we ding those ranges in terms of support and resistance so that's what i'm watching in the aussie kiwi i'm also still watching the kiwi um so i'm looking for the kiwi now to test this uh 67.55 so this is the the big uh the, the beginning of the year or the end of last year um high and so what I what I ideally like to see now with Kiwi, and this would support the idea of the Aussie Kiwi trade um, working in the near term, is a move up into here like so. Let's see if we can get this. So we have this trend line here. So you can see we're, we're carving out a potential wedge pattern here. So I'm looking for one last move up into these highs. And again, then what I'm looking for, because again, it is a counter trend trade and the only Justification for me to, to look at the counter trend trade is that we have negative divergence. So if we can get up into this area, keep keep this momentum slowly diverged, then I'll be looking at bearish reversal patterns, 67.45, and uh, initial target back down into uh, the monthly pivot, and then down to this 65 area. 
would be the objective. Let's just uh, see what we get from a symmetry swing. So yeah, the symmetry swing support would be back down to 65.55. And um, if we take that one out, then we've got this next biggest one here. So that puts us into that 65. So that's what I'm looking at with the Kiwi. Ideally, we get this pop higher. The Aussie Kiwi sells off, as we just talked about. And then uh, when we get into this area, um, we get a uh, bearish reversal patterns, so short positions, looking at this 65 area. And so the Kiwi then brings us into the S&P and a similar type of pattern here. I'm looking for the S&Ps to retest uh, this 3,400 area. Uh, we've got a bunch of confluence there, 3,402. But once we get up there, I'm looking for some profit taking and, uh, and we can see clearly we've got, uh, we've got some divergence here in terms of momentum. And so looking, at, ideally the Kiwi trade will coincide with these S&Ps getting back up into this 3,400 level and then we get a, a pullback. Uh, again, what I, I'm, all I'm doing initially when I'm thinking about the target is looking at symmetry swing. So even that would put us back into that 3,100 area in terms of the S&Ps. NASDAQ, similar type of story here, looking for, you can see clearly the momentum divergence. I'm gonna pop up into the top side of this channel and a pullback then. I think that we should see this idea then maybe of, uh, of the risk rally running into a little bit of uh, consolidation or correction ahead of uh, September, October. Uh, last but not least, gold. <clears throat> so like I say, gold's on a tear. Um, if we go to the weekly chart, it's probably easier. No, monthly chart. Um, so I've got, I've, I'm looking at a target here initially. So if we can get up into this 2146, which is the 1.272 extension of this last swing, if we can get up there, then I'd be looking at reverse, various reversal patterns as, as profit taking kicks, kicks in and you know we've got all this stretch date, the, the sentiment stuff that I talked about at the beginning of this session. And what I'd look for then would be a pullback into retest the 1920s support. And from there, then you could be looking uh, to get in on the long side. And we know that we've got that trend line coming in towards 2400. We've got the 161 extension of this leg here, also 2445. So that would be the, the pattern I'd be looking for in terms of, go, in terms of gold. The stall out at 2146, pull back to the 1920, look for long positions there on the retest of the prior, uh, prior highs as support. And then you've got a great target up towards this 2400 uh, for the next leg higher in gold. Uh, so those are the charts that I'm watching, guys. There's the opportunities, the trades I'm looking at and, uh, and how I'm looking to, uh, to play the market over the coming, uh, coming days. Are there any questions? You can type them into the chat box. If you want to raise your hand, I can unmute your microphone and you can uh, have the joy of speaking to me live. Or you can just type in the chat box if there's a chart I have, you're interested in that I haven't covered. Um, feel free. Very basic question. How do you go about using the Fib extensions as confluence? So with the Fib extensions, you're just looking at the prior swing. So when, you know, once we've, ta once we've taken out um, this high here, so once, basically once we're through the 78.6% retracement, you have a high probability that we're going to see the 127 uh, extension. And so what I'm always watching for is when we get those breakouts for that 127 extension to basically set up either the potential for a reversal or at least uh, for a correction back into those prior highs to complete then what is what you can clearly see would, would be a five way structure here. Let me just draw that in for you. So if we look at this as one, two, and then all the way up here is potentially our three and this is our four and then we get our five there. Does that make sense, Charlie? Uh, Messer. Hi, Messer. Hi, Patrick. How are you? Very good indeed. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you. Patrick, just got a question about um, earlier. Uh, I've put, uh, you've mentioned that it's better to use dailies when um, for counter trend trades. Um, should I avoid the counter trend trades on the hour, uh, intraday completely? 
Um, it, it, when you when we're when we're in these like heavily trending environments, um, the if we go, oh, let me go and go to one. So the euro, for example, is a good example at the moment. So I mean, we're, we're at this trend line. We can see by the tails here there is some there is supply in the market, or at the least there's there's some profit taking. Um, the what 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 you're doing in terms of um, the counter trend opportunity here is if we think about the central tendency of the volatility bands, which is a 20 period look back. So that's giving you an idea of the weekly uh, VWAP, which is bullish. The monthly VWAP is bullish. So before I, before really looking at the intraday charts, you want to see a daily confirmation because when you're the, the intraday chart, it, you know, the setup that, that may look great on the hourly, the, the high probability scenario is that or sorry, you know, the, the, high, the high probability scenario is the trend is going to continue until we see an exhaustion on the daily time frame. Okay. That's what's going to attract the attention. Again, if you think about the idea that we're trying to ride the coattails of, of much bigger players in the market, it's unlikely that they're on the five minute chart looking for a reversal or even the hourly chart. You know, these guys are, are, are paying attention to daily, weekly, and monthly charts. So it's once you get that daily reversal that then the, on the subsequent day, like I did on Monday in the, in the trading, uh, in the team chat, then you can look at using the intraday charts. But again, you get, you, then what you, you want to be really specific about the areas. So, I mean, if we remove the drawings and I'll show, go to the hourly. So, I mean, what I was looking at um, on Monday, obviously we, we can, using this as, a, as an impulsive decline. So initially the area of interest is, is going to be the ABCD. So when we got up into this area, we got that bearish reversal, there was no follow through, so there's no trades. And then the next stop is the 161 extension, which now coincides with the double top. But if you look at the, if you look at the hourly structure now, um, you can see that what we've done at this point is simply hit symmetry swing support. If we look at this leg here, and we overlay it versus the move off the top here, we've held it to the tick. So this is why I was saying in the chat earlier that you, we need to see 1830 go, otherwise we're setting up for a, for a blow off here in terms of this pattern. Now we're not getting meaningfully higher here. And once we get up into this area, we could get the revert, you know, then we could see a big reversal or a daily reversal because we've completed then a sequence. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. So when trading the intraday, it's better off to go um, with trend, con con with trend continuation, yeah, correct? Yeah, look, look here, for example, as you know, if you, if you, once we've got the double, double VWAPs here, so we've got the daily and the hourly VWAP bullish, we know the monthly VWAP is bullish. So the path of least resistance is, is higher, but the, day, the, the, the setup versus the dollar, in, if we think about the dollar index and we think about those major trend lines, it's, it, it, there is certainly, um, you can use a reduced risk size to test the market, see if you can improve the risk reward of then getting into what could be a bigger move. But at the moment, you know, the, the, until we break this at 118.30, then the Euro is, is still has, you know, potentially another, another high to make here, probably up to 19.40. Okay, but um, earlier in the week, you've mentioned there's gonna be some additional content about continuation trade. I've missed some webinars. Was that done or is that gonna be done in the future? It's gonna be, it's gonna be next, towards the back end of next week when we cover that. Okay, sure thing. Thank you, Patrick, that's all for me. Yes, thanks, Mesa. Uh, Samuel, when are you confident that the shift from bullish to bearish momentum has occurred for a possible short? So, um, Samuel, for me, um, what I'm always doing is I, I use these uh, these volume weighted average price uh, as my um, as my key indicator. And so, um, what we've got with, with 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 the euro specifically at the moment, um, obviously, I use uh, let's bring this here. So we've got this channel. So we can see we've held that, we've had three touches there, we've held it. So if we project that versus this high, this gives us channel, projected channel resistance. What we've also got is symmetry swing, sorry, equality swing. 
So you can see we've come up into this area. So this, this becomes a, a, what I would say like an area of interest for me or a potential action area. So when we got this reversal here um, through the five period VWAP, uh, knowing that we're up at the extremes, uh, we didn't quite have uh, divergence as such, but we know we're at extremes in terms of um, the momentum studies here. Then once we get this candle, this is worth, you know, for, for my, you know, in terms of my risk capital, this, then this qualifies as an opportunity. And we did get some follow through, but then we quickly went back up. But now we're testing a potential double top here. So this is why, again, if we get a close today back through 118, for my risk capital, it's worth taking, a, taking a, an opportunity, counter trend on the short side, understanding that it's counter trend, and you can adjust your position size to, to, uh, to account for that. Um, but then you, what you're doing is you're, you, you're looking at a position that will then give you an opportunity to join the major trend. And so, like I say, the way I uh, look at the, the areas of, of interest or, or potential action areas are using these prior swings. So, like I said, if we take out the 116, then um, the next area of interest for me is going to be an equality move versus that structure there, which would have us back at these prior highs, 115. Does that make sense, Samuel? Good stuff. Are there any other questions? If you want to take advantage of the free trial, um, fxcareerswap.com, I'll just put that in the chat. You can, uh, you can find access to the two week free trial uh, for that. Um, and that pretty much uh, concludes today's session, guys. If there aren't any other questions, I'm going to wrap this one up here. I hope it was useful, and uh, I hope you can uh, can join me same time next week. Thanks very much.